we're going to look at factor investing, which is ETFs that look at either low volatility, high yield, good quality, price momentum, value, or a small or large cap size. SWDA is one of the leading global ETFs, it's just market weighted. The whole of the top 10 are in the US and it's got 1,500 holdings. So if you just go on a size factor, this is what you get. Alternatively, you could look at a quality ETF and the quality is determined by return on equity or assets, a low debt to equity level, earnings variability also being low. So a quality score would then be assigned to each company and then you could mark, multiply that by the market capitalization. Then the ETF then aims to select the top 240 to 360 companies from that methodology. Unfortunately, there's no reasonable price filter and P ratios can get too high. And ideally, we want to track the P ratio of the ETF over time to see whether it's getting a bit too detached from reality. So at the moment, these are the quality factor top 10 holdings. So Nike is an interesting inclusion. We've got Roche from Switzerland, Novo Nordisk from Denmark. Um, we've got 296 holdings. So a slight tilt on the overall market cap weighted ETF. Next up is momentum. Uh, now the problem with momentum is that you tend to get locked in for six months on the holdings that have been selected because that's the rebalancing frequency. So this will tend to perform better when markets have really good, solid, long-term trends. And at the moment, I think a lot of people would agree with me that there's quite a lot of exposure to certain US technology type companies. This is UBS socially responsible. Uh, the problem with socially responsible investing is that different people seem to have different definitions of what that actually means and which ones have the highest scores. Uh, so it's quite interesting. Uh, generally software comes up quite high. Apple doesn't feature in the top 10, uh, but it's still quite tech heavy. Uh, this is Dow Jones, sustainability screened, uh, very high weighting for Microsoft here. Um, so it's another way of looking at SRI investing. This is minimum volatility top 10. Um, so it's ones where the share price hasn't really moved much. Some quite interesting companies like PepsiCo, where it's got a diversified customer base. People aren't spending much money each time they buy a Pepsi product. Uh, and the weighting here is capped at 1.5% for each holding at the time the index is rebalanced. So. In addition, uh, it's not too weighted towards the top holdings with only 13.6% in the top 10. This is Vanguard High Yield, uh, a little bit of a confusing methodology because it's based on future forecast yield, which is fine, but it just says that the yield has to be higher than the average for that sector. So um, it still looks fairly similar to a, a global tracker rather than having companies that are maybe paying five, six percent dividends. Next up, we've got value top 10. Um, so it looks at the sales of the company, earnings and book value relative to the overall market cap. Uh, but unfortunately, there's no quality or momentum filters being applied here. So it's just purely looking at value. So when we put it all together, into a spreadsheet, we can look at things like standard deviation and annualized returns, and then we can get a sharp ratio. This is looking over three years. This shows that small cap is the most volatile. Momentum has had the highest drawdown. High yield, minimum volatility and value has spent a long time in drawdown. They've spent quite a few days since the first April 2020 where they've been less than um, 
a 52 week high. Uh, and we can see that this SWDA core world in terms of returns, it beats developed world VEVE, which in turn beats all world, which has emerging markets thrown in as well. Now we look at annualized performance and here we can see that SWDA pretty much for every year is beating VEVE. So this is quite a strong endorsement of a size factor, a large size factor um, and emerging markets not really scoring very highly if you include them. So momentum has done well, it's done the best over this time period, but you can see in 2021 momentum starts to fall apart and to date it's not really done very well. Um, and then also quality at the moment not doing very well. And that's again possibly what I was saying about the PE ratios becoming too high in that area. So the problem is with having a momentum fund is that do you feel confident to buy it when it's off its highs? And so that will mean that you'll like the fund when it's doing really well and when it's doing badly, you'll want to sell it. So um, actually something like SWDA, it just, um, it always seems to come in the middle. So it, it steers quite a, a safe path between um, excessive lows and excessive highs. So that's probably more like something that you just keep in your portfolio and not touch it. So depending on your personality, that could be a good one for you. Um, yeah, then SWDA versus VEVE, because SWDA is more concentrated, it has a stronger self-cleansing mechanism whereby poor performers are ejected earlier from SWDA. So if something like an airline keeps issuing profits warnings, it's going to be kicked out of SWDA quicker. Now, if we do the same thing and apply it to Europe, we do actually get very similar results. Um, small cap being volatile, high yield having a drawdown. Um, same with value. The core 50, this CS51, is beating the more wider European index. Um, and then momentum doing well here. And uh, SRI and quality not doing too badly either. So this is a file that I've produced and I use it with my coaching clients. So if you're interested in finding out more about this, uh, I've got some contact details at the end of the video. <clears throat> so maybe after all that, a possibility is to buy a multi-factor ETF, which would look at two or three factors in combination. These have a limited history. I do feel their methodology could be more transparent. I did find quite a good one, which was the Invesco S&P 500 quality value and momentum. It's an interesting find. It rebounces quarterly. It's 100 holdings. It's currently 40% in financials and 19% in energy. So here are the sector holdings. Um, it's only got 2.05% in information technology. So what's that telling you about the markets at the moment? Uh, then these are the top 10 holdings. Very bizarrely, Moderna is in there. I uh, don't know why at all, um, which just reinforces what I'm saying, that the methodology just isn't transparent. I can't really fully understand it, but uh, this is, is quite an interesting selection. So uh, here I compare SWDA, Global 100, and the S&P QVM. So what is interesting is that the Global 100 and the S&P 500 QBM would pair together quite nicely. There wouldn't be so much of an overlap between these two funds. And the SWDA would probably have all of the S&P 500 QBM in it anyway. So the worst performer is the SWDA. This dark orange line is the Global 100 and the light yellow line is the S&P 500 QBM which ends up pretty much neck and neck with the Global 100. So some quite interesting passive funds there, uh, good performance, and I don't really feel they've been that volatile. So worth further research.